Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to my sewing room. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a tutorial for one of the blocks in my flea market flower sew along. And this is what the quilt looks like. Now I've talked about this quilt in one of the videos here on my channel. And you can see uh, the flea market fabrics up close and personal in that video if you'd like to see it. And I also have a very detailed blog post on this sew along called the Be Prepared blog post. And I will link to that in the description of this video so that if you are new to this sew along or want to know more about it, then you can go to my blog and find all about, you know, the notions. I've detailed every notion, what we're doing with everything. And so that you can find out more about that on the blog today, I'm basically just going to do a tutorial for one of the flowers. And um, so we are using my flea market fabric. So here's some of the yardage needed. And then here's some of the fat quarters. I don't know how well you can see that, but again, I've done a video showing all of my flea market prints. Here's some prints in the fat eights. And then this is the background that we're using. It's the flea market background called bookkeeping. And uh, I really talk about this in the other video, but I just wanted to let you know that there is a lot of yardage required. I've had a few questions saying, how come there's so much yardage required for this? But you have to remember that we're using for the background of every one of the blocks, plus we're using it for the outside border. So that's why it seems like twice as much as you would really need. But I promise this is what you need. So it's been really fun to do the blocks on that fabric. And then I thought I'd bring these out and show them to you too. They're kind of wrinkly right now. I need to iron them. But this is my wide backs from the flea market collection. And it comes in three colors right here. And so it comes like 106, 108 inches wide so that you don't have to piece your backing. And with every fabric collection that I design, I do three wide backs that go with them so that you, you know, they match your fabrics, but these not only match just the flea market, they match a lot of other of my prints as well. And it's really nice not to have to piece a back. And also just because it's, you know, I designed it for backing does not mean that you can only use it for backing. It's for borders. You can cut it up and put it into the front of your quilts as well. It's very good quality and it feels really nice and um, makes great pillowcases too as well. So that's the wide backs. And then also in my blog, there's a link to the sew along guide. So here's my binder for the sew along. And so this is not a pattern. There is no pattern. I do a tutorial every week on my blog once the sew along starts, which is Monday, January 25th, and so it's coming right up. And uh, I do a tutorial step-by-step -step about, you know, just cutting and sewing the blocks, everything you need to do from start to finish on my blog. But for week one, I like to do a video so that I can just talk a little bit about a few things and just show you at least one block. So here's all the flowers. And in the sew along guide, like I say, it's not a pattern, but it is a guide. It tells you the schedule, you know, it tells you all of the fabric requirements, all of the notions. And then within each piece of fabric, it tells you what to cut from that fabric and what block it goes to. Here's a cutting diagram for the background, the bookkeeping background. This talks about how you cut slices using different lines on my ruler, which I'll show you in a minute. And I'm gonna show that to you here on the video, how I cut those slices. And then it talks about all of the rulers used in this sew along and what size interfacing to cut to use with each size, as well as what size fabric to cut with each size. And then here's a layout of the quilt uh, specifying how, you know, the blocks, the, all the blocks are lettered 
we're going to be doing block M today. And it also says within that what to cut your background fabric and then after it's appliqued, what to trim your background fabric up to. Whenever I applique, I always cut my background fabric just a little bit larger. And especially when you're doing some larger blocks like this in this quilt, because you always have to allow for fraying of, of edges of fabrics and just distortion with applique, that kind of thing. If you cut your background the exact same size as needed, guaranteed it's gonna end up a little bit smaller by the time you you know, either machine or hand applique. It just kind of ends up shrinking a little bit just because of the thread usage on the applique pieces. It just kind of pulls the background in a little bit. And so that's why I always cut my background a little bit larger and then trim it up afterwards, you know, before sewing into the quilt. So, so that's the guide. And um, here's the block that we'll be doing today. So I wanted to show you this block because it's the only one that had like the patchwork center and it also has both size leaves that we use throughout the quilt and all of the slices or Dresden blades, whatever you want to call them. I call them slices because it's my pie ruler and you need 16 slices to make one circle or to make one pie. And uh, I designed it to go with another sew along that we had um, several years ago, my sweetie pie sew along but I wanted to use it again to make these um, beautiful flea market flowers. And so that's what we're using. So here's the flower. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about, you know, the cutting and everything that goes into this flower. So let me set that over there. Now what you'll need for this flower are all the little squares that are cut three inches and they are specified in the sew along guide within each one of these prints. And what you'll end up doing with these squares is forming the patchwork center. And so this is what I did. I already sewed the squares together. So it's 16 three inch squares. This is what I did. This is what it specifies in the guide. But you could switch your fabrics around if you have a little bit of leftovers or if you, um, you know, just decide you want something, switch around. All you need is 16 three inch squares. Sew them together, it's just basic patchwork. I do press my seams open. Let me move that bottle out of the way so I can, okay. So I do press my seams open a lot when I'm piecing, but especially if I'm piecing and then I'm going to applique that piece because I want that piece to be as flat as possible. So what I do with that is I, um, after pressing it open, let me grab these. These are the circle rulers that we'll be using throughout the whole quilt for the centers of all of the flowers. But for this circle, we're using this largest ruler, which is a nine inch circle. So what I do with the ruler, let me show you that first, is I grab the ruler, I grab my sew-in interfacing, and what I'll do, let me see, I need to put this on a hard surface, so I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I'll show you afterwards when I finish it, is I'm going to take these center lines on the ruler and I'm just going to make a little pencil mark on those on the outside. And I'll show you why here in just a minute. Okay, so you can see those little lines that I added. And I went from the lines right here on the ruler and the reason I did that is because now what you're going to do when we go to the machine to sew you're going to be able to see these lines right here line up on a seam and that's how you're going to know that you're going to get this circle exactly centered on your patchwork and then you can just go ahead and stick a couple of pins in once it's lined up like that and that will be ready to sew. So that's for, Cass, can you hand me this block? So that's, that is what's gonna be this circle right here. Now for the leaves, well, might as well show you over here. For the leaves, let me show you that real quick. I might need that back in a minute, but okay. So for the leaves, I have 
these seed rulers. Well, let me put it back on here so you can see. These are see-through, so they're hard to see in the camera. But I've got this one right here, this large size that's going to go on this piece of fabric, two of them, and then this smaller size that goes on this piece of fabric right here. Let me put the fabrics down, put the rulers on the interfacing, and then I think you'll be able to see that. And so all I did with that was, to, again, laid my ruler on my interfacing, grabbed a mechanical pencil, and just traced around the outside. And then when it's time to sew those, I simply, the interfacing and the fabric are the same size, and you just, you know, go ahead, stick a pin in there you want, and you're just going to sew right on the lines. I'll show you more of that about that when we get to that part. Now, these are my um, slices already cut, but I am going to show you how to cut the slices first uh, before we go over to the machine so I can talk about that uh, in a little bit more detail, that a little bit. And because, like I say, we are using different lines for different sizes of the flowers, and so I didn't want you to get confused on which line was what, and that does detail that in the sew along guide, but it just kind of helps to have a visual you know, for a start. But before I do that, I want to show you, let me move this ironing board over here just a little bit more. I've got my background piece here. Let me turn on my iron. Get that good and hot. So I've got my background piece here in the sew along guide. It tells you to cut it 20 by 22. So it's 22 wide, I'm um, excuse me, it's 20 wide by 22 long. And then I just folded it in half for a crease so that when we go to lay out the block, I'll be able to use that crease to center. So I've got that and I've got that ready to go. So I'll set that aside and I'll set these strips aside for when we talk about cutting the slices. And I've talked to you about that, talked to you about that. What I do want to show you is the stem. So what we're going to be doing for this is we cut this, the width of the fabric. These are all the half inch stems are done out of this fabric. And then we run it through the half inch bias tape maker. So let me grab that. I'm going to show you how I do that real quick. So for this quilt, we're using two sizes only of the bias tape maker. We're using the quarter inch and the half inch. And these are the only two sizes that we're gonna be using for this quilt. And today, we're gonna to be doing the half inch. Okay, this one's prepared, but I just wanted to show you how I actually do, do prepare it here. So what I do, is grab these scissors. I cut a point so that's easier to get it started. And then I like to spray my strip. This is my spray bottle that I use most of the time and it's got a little bit of starch in it and a little bit of water. It's the Mary Ellen's Best Press that I usually use, but I don't use it full strength. So I just kind of like to get that wet. Then I go like this so that I can get the tip dry so that it's not so flimsy feeling when I go to put it through the end. So here's your, here's your maker, and this is what I do with the point. I just put it through and that starch helps a little bit go through until that point comes out. And sometimes if you can't get the point to come out, here's this little groove here. You can grab a pin or something like that and kind of push it out. So what I do, the instructions tell you when you're using this maker to press it like this so that you can see your folds sides up, but I like to do it totally opposite than that. And what I do is I get it started like this. 
and I just kind of follow with the iron as I go along and I try not to touch the iron to this metal part because eventually I'll burn my fingers if I do that. But what I do is I'm just trailing along following the iron. You need to have a good hot iron. That's why I like these vintage irons. They're hot and they're heavy. I do also have another video about my vintage irons and how I use them and why and where I find them and what to look for and all that kind of thing. So I just continue on. I'm trying to keep this within the the screen of the camera so I'm just going along and I, I do try to do it slow just to make sure that I get it pressed down and because I have a little bit of starch on here it kind of helps keep that keep that fold and then I just continue along and normally I will not be moving you know this as I go I keep it all in one place but like I say I'm trying to do it in short segments here so that I can show you what I'm doing. I'm using one of my little portable ironing boards with my uh, decorator weight fa fabric on it, one of the prints. And I do have a tutorial on how I make those in all different sizes as well and all about my decorator weight fabric. And I do have six new prints of my decorator weight fabric coming out soon, so I'm pretty excited about that. Okay, so once that's run through the half inch bias tape maker, then I just kind of let it cool so I don't want to stretch it out or distort it. And I know, you know, so this is called a bias tape maker. It's by Clover. And this was not cut on the bias. I do cut my fabric on the bias when we're going to do a curved stem or anything curved, but all of the stems and all of the flowers of this quilt are straight. So even though I call it a bias tape maker, it's just across, cut across the width of the fabric, so it's actually straight bias, but I think this fabric is really fun. Makes really cute stems. Okay, so the stems are ready to go, and then in each one, when we're laying out the block, in each block tutorial, I tell you how long that you need your stems cut and everything like that. So there's the stems. I'm going to move my iron and put my cutting board here so I can show you how I cut the pie slices. So let me clear this off real quick. So this block, here, let's unbury this block again so I can show it. Like I said, all of my flowers in the quilt, there's a lot of different sizes. This one is called a 13 and a half inch flower because it measures, you know, 13 and a half inches from point to point. So just the flower itself. So that's why I named it a 13 and a half inch flower. So for the, every flower has 16 slices. This is the pie ruler. Can you see that? Here, Cass, show me an empty. Oh, here, that's good, that'll work. Okay, so there's the pie ruler and see how it has different lines and different numbers, and then dash lines. So these are an inch apart. These dash lines are a half inch. And so for this one to cut these right here, you're going to be, we're gonna be using the six inch and the one inch, and that's all we have to remember. Now you can see that that is one, two, three, four, five inches. And so we're gonna cut, so these are all measure five inches tall. And we're gonna cut our strips. And this says everything in the guide. I'm just telling you, I don't want you to think that you have to memorize everything I'm saying. I'm just showing you what we're gonna be doing. Okay, let's move that out of the way. So because you need a fat quarter of this fabric, you're gonna cut two strips. I have two here on top of each other. You're gonna cut two strips five inches tall across the width of the fat quarter, which is approximately 21 inches. And so I have two layered on top of each other because I can cut two at the same time. And so what I'm gonna be doing is grabbing my ruler and I'm gonna be placing it. You know what, I'm gonna turn, well, you can't, I can't turn this mat over because it's yellow on the other side and then you really can't see the fabric. But I'm just telling you right now that on this, one inch right here, that's gonna be the top of the fabric, right there. So you may not be able to see it, but I can. Don't worry about the lines on the on the 
mat. You're just gonna be following the lines on the ruler. So here's the six inch line and here's the one inch mark. And I'm just gonna keep that down there. I like to keep my pinky finger on one side of the ruler to help stop it from slipping. And I simply make my first cut along that ruler. Now, this I'm gonna have to turn around so that I can cut the other. And again, make sure every time you move your fabric or your ruler for this size flower, you're putting it on uh, the one inch and the six inch line. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those two. So I've got two slices right there. Okay, so now is the time when we flip our ruler back and forth. And this saves on fabric and you're gonna have to do this in order to have enough fabric. You don't wanna cut them singly, like just fussy cutting. You're gonna have to flip your ruler up and down so that you can not waste any of the strip except for just what's left over at the end. Now for this size uh, flower, for the 13 and a half, you will be able to get eight cuts out of one five inch by 21, 21 inch. And I have two at the same time. So because we need 16, all I need to do is cut this eight times and then I'm gonna have 16 because I'm doubling the cut. And this is something I'm gonna to try to concentrate on while I'm talking to you because I do not wanna make a mistake. So for instance, other flowers you might cut, you know, you might cut it right here or right here and the top's here and you only have the strip four inches long. But I will detail that in every tutorial. I'll show you the cutting, show the line, and it is there in the sew along guide. All right, so that's what I have left over. And now that I have 16 slices cut, we're gonna go over to the machine and I'm gonna show you how to sew these into flower petals. And I'm also gonna show you how to sew the leaves and the circle. So let me get set up and I'll be right back. All right, so here we go with the machine. This is, by the way, I'm sewing on my new uh, new old <laughs> featherweight machine. This is Miss Dolly. And here I've got the two small leaves and they just have the sewing interfacing pinned to the fabric. Both are right sides up. I want my marked interfacing up right side so that I can sew right on that line and I want to be able to see it. And then, of course, I want my fabric right side up so that when I turn it, it will be facing the correct way. So what I do is I just start anywhere. I usually do not start on a point, but I'm sewing right on the line. Now on this featherweight, it has like a little open-toed foot and I always like to do that no matter what machine I'm using so that I can see exactly where my needle is going in. I don't use a larger stitch or a smaller stitch than I use when I'm just piecing quilts. So whatever that is on your machine, just a regular stitch length that you like. If you use it too, if you use too small of a stitch, you may gather up your piece, like make it real tight. And if you use too large of a stitch, you really will gather it up. So I just like to use a regular stitch and I haven't had any problems. So I just keep going around and then when I start, I over sew about a half inch to an inch about where I started. And then I'll just turn my piece and sew right off of it and just pick up the other piece. And that way I can chain, chain sew these. When I get to the point, I lift up my foot and I just go a different direction. Now these are very slight curves, so I can go fairly quickly. When you're sewing my, uh, this is the same method that I use for my Sew Simple Shapes. And some of those are like flower shapes or you know shapes that go in and out. Then I just simply go a little bit slower and especially on the curves and I just lift up my presser foot when I need to. And you know, it's not a big deal, it works out just fine. So then I'll just clip these apart as I go and I've got the larger ones and I do the same thing with that. What's nice about this interfacing too is you can see through it a little bit so you can see exactly what it's gonna look like 
on your fabric so you could move your piece around a little bit if you have like a stripe or something like that to make sure you know you get it exactly how you want to get it but I'm not worried about these prints at all okay so now that those are finished I am going to take my scrap pieces of fabric and I like to do this to save on time and to save on thread I usually just have either actual patchwork, doing a bonus quilt, or some scraps of fabric. But usually while I'm filming, I just use these scraps of fabric and it just makes it easier when I'm starting and stopping. Okay, so now I just remove these pins. And a lot of times when I'm sewing smaller pieces like this, I don't even pin because I find that this, you know, the sewing interfacing kind of stays to the fabric and really doesn't slip. So a lot of times I'll just grab and start sewing and I'm, I'm good to go. So what I'm gonna do with this is um, just trim past my sewing line at approximate quarter inch seam allowance or a little bit smaller. When you come to these points, you can come a little bit closer, but don't go too close. But if you come a little bit closer and trim that off at the ends, it kind of saves on a little bit of bulk, but it's, not too bulky. These are meant to be, you know, a little bit dimensional. They're not supposed to lie flat. If you want yours to lie flat, you can do, you know, iron-on or something like that. But I typically don't use iron-on. I don't like to see through my fabrics, and it has a tendency to do that. I just really like applique, and I like the dimension that my interfacing gives. So then I will take a seam ripper right here or a pair of scissors. So if you're brave, you can use the seam ripper. If you're not, do this. <laughs> Pinch it apart so that you're only going to cut just a little teeny snip into your interfacing right there. And then I'll, I always feel right here to make sure I'm not going to be cutting into the fabric. And I'll just cut like a little, just a little X right here. Just big enough, you don't need to do it too big, just big enough so that you can open that up. When I do it with the seam ripper, let's see, can you see it? Can they see this, Cass? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I do it with the seam ripper, I do the same thing. I just feel my fabric, make sure the point of that seam ripper is not going through there. And see, I'll just do that whole long thing. But it just depends on uh, how brave you're feeling that day. Because <laughs> I don't want to cut them and sew them again, so whichever one you want to do, but especially with these small pieces, it is a little bit easier to do the seam ripper because it gets a little bit harder to pinch the interfacing away from the fabric. Now I will take my scissors and just cut a little bit this way. It just makes it a little bit easier to turn. And then this, after we've turned it, this interfacing just falls back into place and it's pretty nice. Okay. Now, before we turn those, I'm going to sew up my circle real quick. And I just do that the exact same way. We pinned it, it's all lined up with the lines and that's good to go. So I can just start anywhere in the circle. I just sew into the line and then I start pivoting around. Now, I need to sew this with this side up. And I know that I press these seams open. So along the way, as I'm going, I'm feeling beforehand. You can tell when one of your seams is pushing over to one side. So I do the best I can. When I get close to a seam, you can always lift it up just to check it out. Just so that those seams remain open. Okay, so that's trimmed. Now I'm not gonna use the seam ripper on this because <laughs> number one, it's big enough that I can pinch it across. Number two, I might catch one of the seams under there. And number three, I do not wanna sew this patchwork circle again. So I'm just gonna go on the safe side, pinch it apart. It's always better to be safe than sorry, right? Then once I've got my little clip, 
knowing it's far enough away from my patchwork, I can just cut my little X. And again, you really don't need a big X. That's good enough. And so then we're just gonna turn it right side out, all of these pieces. And then I'm gonna take my little uh, clover turning tool. This is my favorite thing. I hardly ever use this end. Sometimes I do with big circles like this, but mostly I use this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and turn these and let you watch me shake them. All right, so I'm using this tool to shape, but I just want to point out, when we're talking about the points, that you just gently push because you don't want to, you know, put out, put a little hole in your points or push out too far. Sometimes I'll also turn my piece sideways like this and push out a little bit, and that really allows that to get that really nice point. Now, ask me how I know this, but sometimes if you do poke a little bit of hole, usually the fabric will come out and it looks like a little bit of fraying. Sometimes I can save it without having to do a new piece. And how I do that is I just apply a little bit of the sew glue that we're using in this sew along on there and just kind of turn the frayed pieces over towards the interfacing and let that dry and then I can go ahead and still use the same piece. So again, ask me how I know that because sometimes I've done that. You can also shape with your fingers. Another thing that really works well, I will end up pressing these with the iron, but sometimes, I mean, I use this tool. This is my seam roller that I use quite a bit and you would be surprised once you shape it like this, how that will, um, make the cotton crease right there, the cotton fabric, and it just stays there nice and beautifully. And then I usually just have to take it over to the iron and just press it real quick. So I do use my seam roller quite a bit. And I also use this when I'm, um, you know, pressing seams open a lot in my patchwork, as well as I used it when I um, press these seams open for the patchwork circle. Just didn't want to forget to tell you about that. Okay, we've got one more to go, one more to shape, and then we're gonna give them a quick little press. With a not, nice hot iron, I do not use steam. And of course I use vintage iron, vintage irons, and they don't have steam in them anyway, but if I do want to apply moisture to my block, then I just use a spray bottle or a mister bottle. But I, um, I don't want to do that after these or so, and I don't want to apply moisture to my interfacing. Okay, so that's looks pretty good, these four petals along with the circle. I'm gonna go over here, and like I say, I'm just gonna give them a quick press. When I say press, I'm not gonna go like this all the way around the circle, I'm just gonna press the edges, even though it's very tempting to do that, but I just, you know, I don't think it's really going to distort it that much. You see that I just lightly did that just to show you. Um, if this was just a circle without interfacing on the back, it very well would distort it. But um, because there's some stability with this, you know, you can have a little bit of leeway with that. But really, you're going to be applicating these edges down. So it's not like you want it as flat as a pancake or anything. You just want to make sure that your circle edges are all turned out. And then with these, I just literally set the iron on top. And like I say, I usually will roll them or iron them or both. And 
and I just want to crease the cotton fabric on the edges there. Cotton has a memory and just by pressing it a little bit around the edges it'll do that crease and it'll stay that way. And so those are ready to go for when we lay out our block. But um, so I'm going to set those aside. But next up I'm going to show you how to sew these flower petals. Okay so here we have all of the pieces plus we have 16 of these slices that we're going to turn into a 13 and a half inch flower but I wanted to show you I went and grabbed this um, I didn't want to forget to tell you that I did cut this eight inches long and then I pressed like a half inch under right there so the raw edge will go underneath the flower center and then that edge that was pressed under will show on the quilt. So that's how I prepare the stems. I will always tell you with each block how long to cut them or how long they need to be finished size, you know, so, so that you don't have to guess so that your block doesn't go too big or something like that. So, all right, let's do these cute little petals. The first thing I do is, oh, let me tell you about this. I, I will be using a quarter inch seam allowance. So I always keep this on my machine anyway, even though I didn't need my, this is my seam so easy guide. I did not need it when I was sewing my shapes, of course, because I'm just sewing right on the line. But I use this for when I'm doing my easy corner triangles. I follow the center line and then this one is my quarter inch seam allowance. And so I always have this taped to my machine um, I want it removable so that I can move around, take it off, you know, when I'm changing my bobbin or whatever. But I always have a variety of washi tape and that I do with each fabric collection. And washi tape is fun. I use it for so many things in quilting. And one of the main things I use it in is um, for to tape my seam so easy guide onto my machine. But you can just, you can tape a lot. You can tape a little. It won't ruin your machine. It won't um, leave any residue or anything like that. But it's really fun to do. Like, look at this cute little vintage lady one. You can tear those off and have a little vintage lady keeping you company while you're sewing your stuff. Okay, so I have that taped on. I just line this again up with my needle, and that's how I tape it to my machine. I use the grid lines here to line up with lines on my machine so that I know that it's going straight this way and not, you know, kind of ski wampus. So when I'm sure it's going exactly straight, I test it out and then I'll go ahead and sew. I'm gonna take the widest part of the blade and I'm gonna fold it in half so that those points meet. And I'm gonna turn it so that the points are going that way and the fold is facing me. And I'm gonna run it under the machine at quarter inch right here. I'm not gonna back stitch there. I'm just gonna keep sewing. But when I get to this point right here, or the fold, sorry, when I get to the fold, not the point. I do not back stitch on the point ends, but I do back stitch just a few stitches on the, on the folded part. And I'll show you why when we get to that part and unfold them. But I'm just gonna, again, I'll show you two or three folded in half, points that way, fold towards me, quarter inch seam allowance, no back stitching back stitching just a few and I'll just go ahead and do that with all 16 petals. Alrighty, now we've got these all sewn. And now what I'm going to do is take this and kind of open it like this. Take my finger. Can you see what I'm doing with my fingers? I'm just opening this seam and I'm going to flip it. And if I don't feel like it got a good enough point, I want this seam open. I'm just going to barely tug on that, but see. See how that's a nice point there? And this seam is open right here. I'm gonna do the same thing to all of these petals. So this is gonna be your finished edges right here. 
and then we're going to sew all the petals together with a quarter inch seam allowance until it forms a circle and then it will all have finished edges and you don't need to use the interfacing or anything when you go to applique it's already ready to go so i'm just going to press this over here to the take it over to the iron and i like to turn it this way so that i can see that this straight line is going down in the center and i will just press that and now it's going to stay that way if you're worried about them not being flat enough you could use the clapper if you want but at this point i usually don't use the clapper i will use that maybe while i'm making the flower forming the petals together but this is what i'm going to do for all of them and then um, i'll chat a little bit about sewing them together all right so as you can see i skipped ahead a little bit and got a lot of them done because you don't need to you know, watch me doing every single blade because they're all the same. So every petal is now pressed like this and you just start by sewing two of them together so that it looks like this and I press the seams open. Now when I sew them together, I line them up as much as I can at the top, like with the point and the bottom right there. And if that's sticking out just a little bit, that's okay. That's how I that's how I sew. I'd rather have them lined up at the point and the bottom. That way you kind of keep it all straight. And then I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam allowance down here. Now I'm going to start with the folded on the top edge, and I am going to backstitch that just so that the you know petals don't fall apart. So I do my quarter inch seam allowance. When I clip these threads, I'll clip it not close to the petals, but away so that I have that little string there and from the back stitching. And then when it time, comes time for applique, I just tuck that behind. I don't ever clip that off close and that works out fine. So then I just bring it over here, open it up and press it open and again you can use these clappers if you'd like to sometimes i do sometimes i don't it just depends on if i feel like it needs a little bit of flattening so then after you can see that i've you know have them in sets of four now but you know i just did them all until i had sets of two and then i sewed the sets of two together just like I did the sets of four. So basically, set that back up there. Basically, I just line it up the same way. Trying to make these center seams line up. And then again, I'll run it through quarter inch seam allowance. Now these flowers are really fun to sew. And I don't want you thinking that, you know, it has to be perfect or it has to be perfection or anything like that. It's, it's just a flower. As long as your edges are turned under and it's all going to work out great. And then I just go over here. And press that open. Some people who make Dresdens, um, you know, they'll pre press their seams all one direction. But again, because I'm appliquing, I want to do them all open so that they'll lie flat. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so now I've got these four segments and I'm simply just gonna sew them together until I just keep going and it's all a circle and I'm going to sew them together the same way, always putting the folded edge under first and back stitching and continuing on. And so I'm going to finish sewing this together, pressing the seams open until I have the circle. And then I'm going to meet you right back over to my work table and I'm going to show you how I lay it out and prepare for my applique. All right, now we're here back to the workspace and I have everything ready to go including my flower it's all sewn together this measures 13 and a half inches from here to here and 
it's got this area in the middle that you could put a smaller circle on it if you wanted to, but we're using this fun patchwork circle. So I'm going to show you how I lay out my blocks in preparation for applique. So I always lay out the background on a design board. Now this is a large background, so I put my design board, my large one, going, you know, on point like that. So hopefully you can see that. I'll kind of move it back and forth if I need to. But the gold that we're going for here, let me show you the one I already previously had done, is with each block tutorial, I will tell you how tall and how wide your design needs to be. So for this one, it's, I believe it's 19 inches. So we're gonna measure from this point. Let's see, can you see that? Can you see that point? We're gonna measure from that point, clear down to the bottom of this stem. I don't know if you can see that, but clear down to the bottom of that stem and that's 19 inches. So you want your entire flower from the points to the bottom of this to measure 19 inches. And then you want your um, flower obviously is going to be, you know, 13 and a half this way, but this way it's going to measure, you know, straight across. Oh, it's still almost 13 and a half this way. And then you, my leaves right here are about 13. They could go out to 13 and a half, but as long as you know your measurement here, then you know how to kind of tip your leaves up and down. So let's go from there. So the first thing I like to do is I pin everything out on my design board. That's why I put it on the design board because I like to pin first. Now, when you're laying these blocks out, you can see that you can either on this folded line, put put your um, seam right here on the folded line or you can line it up at the point. On all my flowers there in this quilt, they're lined up at the seam. So I'm gonna kind of lay that there. I just wanna make sure I have enough background fabric going that way. I grab my tape measure and this is kind of where I start off. Just about, wow, I wasn't too far off on that. So I just need to bring this stem down just a touch and I'm gonna leave that flower where it is. And usually the first thing I do on these flowers is the stem. So what I do is I take a little Sioux glue here and I like to either apply right on the fold of the fabric or right down the center of the stem. And I just do a very thin line and I do half at a time. I just wanna make sure that stem is centered. So I'll just fold that back. I won't move it because I know it's in the right place. I just like to do a thin line because I don't want to have to needle through this by hand or even go by machine, even though you can. It just, you know, I don't like to have to. So again, I just have this crease down the center of my background and now I've got that glued down. And now that this is kind of folded up right here, this is, I'm going to show you where I apply the glue to. I just put a dot there and on the intersections on the points and on the intersections, and that is all you need. And I do it about a quarter of an inch away from the edge or a half inch away. And uh, then I'll fold it back down, make sure that seam is right there. Now, before I do the other half, I'm gonna grab my tape measure again and just make sure that something didn't get moved. It's a little shorter than 19 inches, so I can either move my flower up or move my stem down just a touch. And so that's what I did. This glue takes a few minutes to set up, but not too long, but it is, you know, you can move it around a little bit. Let me move this down. I want you to be able to see the whole flower. And so then, that's what I love about this glue is because it does adhere it, you know, to the background so that it's not gonna move during either machine or hand applique. But if you make a mistake as you're measuring and you know pinning and things like that, then um, you can just kind of pull it off, tug it off and reposition it. And so that's what I like. Okay, so there's my flower right there. Now let me, 
we'll let that dry. Um, you can pin that into place if you want to, but I don't feel it's necessary. I usually just use my pins when I'm placing things. So let's see, if I move this castle, they can see where I'm working with the leaves. Mm -hmm, that's good. Okay. So here's my small leaves and my large leaves. And I do want to leave a little bit of stem on the bottom, probably about three quarters of an inch, an inch, something like that. But this is where I'll bring in my pins. And these are my applique pins. These are my favorite ones to use for this. And I'll just pin, pin down here at the point where I want it to go so that I can pivot this way. And I'll just stick that and that's pinning right into the design board. And before I you know, play around with those, I want to be able to do the same thing with this so I can make them look kind of nice and even. Now, right now, when I'm turning this out and pulling this out with this angle and this angle, I think that looks pretty good. But the test will be when I measure across here to these leaves. Can you see that, sis? Mm -hmm. Okay, so these leaves are 14 inches, so I can see that that is a little too wide. I want them realistically to be about 13 inches across, so what I'm going to do is pivot that up, pivot that up, pivot those up. Then I'm going to measure across. Where's my tape? Okay, just a touch more and I'm good to go. And then once I've got them down to where I want them to be across, across wise, as long as they're not wider than the flower, you're going to be okay. Then I will pin them right into place so they do not shift during the glue basting part. Now I'm just going to give a quick look to these and make sure it's kind of centered from here to here. And I like the angle that they're at. And then I'll go ahead and put one more pin in there. Now, while the pin's in there, now I can grab my glue and just put a few drops here. Lift this up the side. And I don't go all the way to the edge because I don't want to needle it. I'm basically using this glue as I would a pin. You know, putting a little dot where I would normally put a pin. And just make sure I get the corners. Now, um, I love I love to use this because it is water soluble, like I say, but it is repositionable if you need to. And so it gives me a lot of freedom. And even if I don't, you know, per se, really make a mistake, but decided I wanted it to look different and change it up before I do the final applique, then I know I can move it. So speaking of applique, you can either applique by hand or machine. And um, these flowers would be great for machine. All I would suggest is that you use matching thread for your appliques. So you wouldn't have to do that in your bobbin. You would just have to have the matching thread in the top. So I would use yellow and then I would use greens for these. And I just use a tiny little zigzag stitch. I will leave a link in the description below. A few months ago, I actually did a tutorial on where you can see machine applique, how I do it, and how I do hand applique as well um, when I'm using my shapes. And so I'll leave a link if you need a refresher on that or if you have never seen me do that before. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is the circle. So what you wanna do is just decide which way is right side up. And, but what's really nice about this is because you've got seams in here, in your, um, little petals and seams in here, you can line those seams up just like we did with the lines on the rulers. And now I know that that circle is in Could the center of the flower. So oh, sorry. <laughs> so um, if you really need to know, you know, if you're really worried about it, you can take this little ruler. I can see that's, looks like it needs to come this way a little bit which still lines up with the seams, you know. So it looks to me like it's an inch and a quarter from the inside of here to the outside of the circle all the way around. And so you can quickly check that if you want to. 
but once I get that lined up how I want it, then I definitely will put, you know, like four pins in here just so that it will not shift. And again, once I get it glued down, um, and then I look at it far away, you know how sometimes you can see it, something at a better perspective far away. Once I glue all the edges, and I might, you know, put it up on my design wall or something, or let it dry, and then I'm like, that circle looks like it's off or something like that, then I can always reposition it. But it's better to just kind of use your ruler if you're worried about it and do it, you know, in the first place so we don't have to go back and do that. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, this little step-by-step -step tutorial. All of the flowers, meaning the flowers, all of the petals are sewn the exact same way. There's no difference. It's just going to be a difference on how you cut them according to size. And so I will detail that on my blog each Monday until each flower tutorial is completed. And um, so that's all you have to do to join this sew along. You can find a kit by, um, you know, doing a quick, easy Google search of quilt shop near you or online that, you know, have some kits left over and just type in flea market flowers quilt kit. And I'm sure, you know, that you'll find one. And um, we'll just be tuning into my blog every Monday. That's all you have to do. Grab your fabric, grab the three sets of rulers, and we're good to go. And I hope you're looking forward to growing all these flowers with me and into a beautiful garden. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please subscribe and you can hit the bell to subscribe so that you can get notifications for new tutorials and videos that I do on my channel each week. And I'm so happy you've joined me and I will chat with you later.